Hey everyone, it's Kevin. I just wanted to share a quick tutorial to create this snowflake in Blender 3D with grease pencil and a really simple geometry node setup. If you don't know what grease pencil is, it's an object within Blender that allows us to draw in 2D but in 3D space. And geometry nodes is a system that is capable of creating these procedural and complex graphics. Combining them will allow us to arrange our grease pencil element in a way that resembles a snowflake. If you'd like to see another reference, you can check out my Art Nouveau pumpkin animation I made a few weeks back and I'll leave a link below. That piece uses a similar setup to the one that we'll be creating here. Before we start, make sure that you have Blender 3.0 installed. Let's go into our Geometry Nodes workspace at the top here and join these windows by right clicking on the middle divider, selecting Join Areas and clicking towards the left. Click on the cube and down here select New to create a new Geometry node setup. Let's delete the group input with X and our cube disappears in the viewport but don't worry, we'll just be using it to house our Geometry node setup. So what we want is to have something we can instance our Grease Pencil object on. Let's bring in a new Curve Primitive by hitting Shift A, Curve Primitive, and then selecting a Curve Circle. Then connect the Curve Output of Curve Circle to the Geometry Input of Group Output. So now we see our Curve Circle highlighted in orange. We want to adjust the number of points on this curve, so let's bring in a Resample Curve node by hitting Shift A, Curve, and selecting Resample Curve. Then drop it in between these two nodes. Here we can adjust the number of points, and for now let's input 6 for the sake of creating a snowflake, but you can adjust it to any number you'd like. To better visualize what's happening here, let's bring in a Grease Pencil object. So in the viewport, hit Shift A, Grease Pencil, and you'll see three different options that are Blank, Stroke, and Monkey or Suzanne. Let's bring in this monkey and shift it to the right with G and then X. Click back onto your cube that has the geometry node set up. We want to instance this Grease Pencil object onto the points of this curve. So let's bring in a Instance on Points node by hitting Shift A, Instances, and then Instance on Points. Drop it in between Resample Curve and the Group Output. And then let's specify our Grease Pencil object to Instance. We can either drag it from the Outliner, or we can hit Shift A, Input, and Selecting Object Info. So let's pick the Suzanne object and check as Instance. Now connect the geometry output to the instance input here and you should see the monkeys in a circular array. I want to have this situated vertically, so let's bring in a transform node by hitting shift A, clicking on search which is another way to bring in nodes, and typing transform. Place it in between resample curve and instance on points. Then in the X rotation, type 90, and in the Y rotation, 30, so it's upright. Let's actually increase the radius of the curve circle to 2. Now we need to rotate them so they're oriented facing outward. Let's bring in a position node by hitting Shift A and in search, typing position and connecting it to the rotation input here. To align the rotation of these objects to face the front, hit Shift A and in search, type align Euler to vector and drop it in between the position and rotation input. Let's move this connection noodle to the vector input and select Z. And now all the objects should be facing forward. So with our setup done, we're going to move on to working with our grease pencil object. Let's go into the 2D animation workspace by clicking on this plus up here, 2D animation, and then selecting the 2D animation workspace. So our grease pencil object appears dark and that's because it's currently being affected by the lights on our scene. Let's click on it, go into the Object Data Properties tab, and uncheck Use Lights for both the lines and fills. So we're going to use what's already drawn here, kind of like a guide to help sketch out each leg of our snowflake. With it selected, tab into Edit Mode. Hit A to select all, then scale in the X until the ears touch, and then we'll do the same along the Z. Let's hide the Lines layer and take down the opacity of the Fills layer just a bit. Let's create a new layer above the Lines layer, rename it to Guides, and uncheck Use Lights. Let's go into Draw Mode. Make sure our Stroke Placement here is set to 3D Cursor, our View is set to Front, and let's bump up Strength to 1. Make sure your timeline head is at the beginning and click this record button to draw. 
In our viewport, hit Y to make sure that you have your guides layer selected. So we're going to make a more refined guide using the line tool. Let's draw a line from the top of the monkey to down here where it hits the center of the array. Select it if you need to make some adjustments. Duplicate it with Shift D, then rotate with R, Y, and typing 90. Then bring it up in the Z and scale it in the X to where it hits ear to ear. So then hit 1 and select the endpoints on the left and the right and hit E to extrude down to the center here and S to scale them in. So these kind of act like boundaries for us to draw in. With our guides done, let's sketch out the pattern we want to create. Lower the opacity of the guides layer and create a new layer under it. Rename it to sketch and uncheck use lights. So for this part, we're going to apply a mirror modifier onto our object by clicking on this wrench here and selecting it from this list. The mirror modifier does exactly what it says and mirrors your object according to its origin point. If you have a tablet, use it. If you don't, try to create something rough with the draw tool and smooth it out or use the shape tools. Side note, I might create a tutorial on how to draw with grease pencil without a tablet using these features, so let me know if you're interested in seeing that in the comments below. Now, with the draw tool selected, I'm going to go in and sketch something pretty abstract. Again, because you have the mirror modifier applied, you only need to draw on one side. This is going to be an abstract snowflake and more design oriented, so feel free to draw whatever you'd like. And as I'm drawing this, I'm constantly referencing what this looks like in our array as well. Now, with our sketch done, I'm going to hide our guides layer and take down the opacity of our sketch layer a bit and lock it. Then delete this lines and fills layer and let's create a new layer underneath sketch. Name it outline and uncheck use lights. Then go into our materials tab and we're just going to use that black outline already in there. Make sure use pressure is unchecked for both the radius and strength up here. This is because I like to have a constant width for my outline, but this is up to you. I'm also taking the radius up to 50 pixels. So I'm just going over my sketch with a refine line, and I'm also switching between sculpt and draw mode. I'm doing that by accessing the radial menu with control plus tab and going to sculpt. Then I'm selecting the smooth tool by hitting shift plus spacebar and then one. With the outlines done, tab into object mode and let's apply that mirror modifier by clicking on the dropdown and selecting apply. Let's hide our sketch layer. Create a new layer underneath outline, rename it to fill and uncheck use lights. Go into the material properties tab and select the skin material. Rename it to fill and select a white color. Hit Y in the viewport to make sure you have the fill layer selected. Now let's use our fill tool to color parts of our snowflake. If you have holes in your outline, it won't work. You can hold down shift click drag to close it and then click again to fill it. So now, adjust the colors if you'd like. I'm going to make this outline a blue instead of black. We can give a subtle shake to our snowflake by adding a noise modifier, or applying length to build it on, or we can add some grease pencil effects on it like rim. I generally like to use the rim effect in my pieces and then amplify that with a glare compositing node, but you can do whatever you'd like. So here is our base grease pencil snowflake. Now there's a lot you can do with that grease pencil object to make it your own and the geometry node system. I'll briefly go over a few of those things, but feel free to experiment. Let's go into our geometry nodes workspace and click on our system. So with this transform node, we can keyframe the rotation in the Y so that it spins. What you do is you create a new window by dragging at the corner here and making this our timeline. Then in our setup, hover over the Y rotation, keyframe it with I and go forward a few frames. Then increase the Y value and hit I to keyframe and now you'll see it spins. We can also rotate these individual grease pencil elements with a rotation instances node and adjusting the Z value. We can also instance a second grease pencil object. Let's duplicate our original grease pencil object and move it over. I'm going to make some quick adjustments in edit mode, then duplicate the object info and rotate
replicate instances node in our setup and bring in a join geometry node and connect them like this. Then check pick instance in the instance on points and in the second object info node, select that second grease pencil object. And now you'll see that our system switches off between the two objects. Now we didn't really do any animating with our grease pencil object, but if you did, that would be reflected in the array as well. So you can see how this lends itself to customization and you can create some really complex pieces with just a few elements. So that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and hope you found it helpful. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing and let me know what else you'd like to see in the future. I'm still working on a new tutorial series, but that will be coming in the new year. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below or find me on Instagram at Kevin Ram. Thanks again. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Thank you.